Destiny is obsessed with a lot of things. 1970s sci-fi, guns with really weird names, icons, 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 and orbs. Glowing, hovering, completely inscrutable orbs. From bubble bobbles to baffling spheres, video games are rolling in orbs. But Destiny's infatuation is unique. You've got everything from glowing balls of incomprehensible energy to a giant, godlike sphere that hovers over the last city on Earth and 99% of Destiny's marketing material. Orbs permeate the gameplay, aesthetics, and lore of the series. But why? Humanity's fascination with orbs extends well beyond video games. Google Mysterious Orb and you'll find page after page of phantom spheres captured by low-res security cameras. The orb came and went for hours. Sure, most of these can be explained away as glare or dust in a lens or distant car lights or rocket launches or weather balloons. But the point is, there's something about them that we find alluring. It's why a floating sphere is such a tempting object in video games. When we see an orb, we must have it. Or at the very least, understand its arcane nature. Bungie knows that, and they're exceptionally good at letting us know what something means when they want to. Even something as simple as the game's icons. Ryan Claverweed was the visual design lead on Destiny 2, so he knows a thing or two about iconography. Arc looks like this, and if anyone uses this icon, you should know that that means arc something. I, I tried to definitely institute graphic design principles that you would still that you would use on like a corporate uh, branding guide, and then apply those to a video game. This branding guide approach allows them to communicate a lot of information with just a simple set of shapes. For example, there's a new helmet in the latest expansion that gives the Hunter class a teleportation ability it hasn't had since the first Destiny. By slightly riffing on the original icon, they can explain this new ability without using any words. That was always huge. Can I make one set of iconography or one set of ideas that means a lot to this game and it exists in this world. The first time you see Destiny's menu, it might as well be written in hieroglyphics. But thanks to the extremely intentional and holistic symbols, you quickly come to understand what all those icons mean as you go about your daily chores, I mean quests. And that saves you time because it helps to connect all these disparate concepts. Bungie knows how powerful iconography can be, which begs the question, What's the deal with all these orbs? We are left with no choice but to study each one of these perplexing spheres, from the smallest ball of energy to the iconic traveler, in order to discover what is the real meaning behind them. That means we've got a lot of balls to get through. So first, let's start with the ones that you can pick up and caress like a sweet babe, and then slam dunk. Whether it's fusion cores, lamp orbs, glowing relics, or void charges, when you pick up a crackling ball of energy in Destiny, there's pretty much only one thing you're going to do with it. Slam jam it to the ground so hard it explodes. Sure, they have different explanations in the lore. Deactivate this shield barrier. Disrupt the ritual. Ignite the lamps. Charge the generator. Use your hands to pick up the energy. But the end result is still going to be taking a ball and smashing it into something. Or just bouncing it off your head for fun. Whee! This summer, Bungie added an exotic beam cannon, the Ruinous Effigy, which turns a regular match of Destiny into an explosive slam dunk competition. You can find hundreds of Ruinous Effigy dunking compilations on YouTube because it never gets old. No, 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 no. It might sound like I'm saying that dunking is an overused mechanic in Destiny, but that's not the case. In fact, Bungie might be the only developer out there that understands that the appropriate amount of slam dunks in a video game is always more. However, these are actually some of the most scrutable orbs in Destiny. They're basically just glowing basketballs. Though I should point out how jarring it was to find an actual basketball in the new Beyond Light expansion, which ironically you can't dunk with. That takes care of all the orbs that you can hold and touch, but what about the ones in your inventory? There was a point in time, and I think it, around D2, it was around D2-ish, uh, where I said to her, I was like, we can't keep making circles. Everything's a circle. Everything's a, a ball. Like, every, every currency, every, you know, uh, quest item is a ball, a glowing ball or a metal ball. Like a bottle of orbits, Destiny 2's inventory will always inexplicably include some orbs. When Bungie put a bunch of content into cold storage with the latest expansion, a lot of these orbs disappeared, likely forever. But does that mean they stopped adding spherical items to the inventory? <laughs> no, of course not. 
The Here Always is a brand new type of currency that comes from the Fallen. To understand why this alien race might use a ball as currency, you need to understand the relationship with the Traveler. Before this big mysterious ball ever hovered over Earth, it graced the Fallen with a technological golden age. They worshipped it like a god, and eventually began crafting items in its image. Like these hyper-intelligent ball machines. Servitors became an important part of the Fallen's social hierarchy, even after the Traveler left them for Earth. Which is to say that sometimes there's a really big servitor as the boss at the end of a level. In real life, orbs have a long history of religious symbolism. Ancient Greeks and Romans depicted their gods holding these abstract and unnatural objects. Later, Christians put a cross on it, called it a Globus Cruciger, and used it to symbolize the divine right of Christ and Christian monarchs over the earth, which I should remind you is an orb. If humans did it, then it stands to reason the fallen might have too, which seems pretty scrutable to me. And they might not have been the only ones. You can find Vex spheres all over the semi-machine world Nessus. The Vex are a race of highly intelligent robots that can simulate and therefore predict the future. So why are they carving a bunch of big stone orbs? The simple answer is, we don't know, because this guy is the universe's foremost expert on the Vex. Ah, the Vex gate at the center of the lake. What lake? So I'm just gonna call these Vex orbs middling scrutable. They might be super important to lore, but you can't interact with them, so who really cares? A plan unsupported by any data. So the Vex are vexing. What happens when you take on the Taken? By the way, Bungie, love these names. Keep up the great work. Anytime you encounter this interdimensional shadow race, there will probably be some impenetrable blight domes alongside them. Sometimes they're even accompanied by a giant pulsating black orb floating in the sky. The blight domes protect any Taken inside of them, forcing you to enter their inhospitable environs to destroy their glowing orbital core. Look, I don't understand how the Taken work any better than I understand how gravity works, but I do know that gravity pulls everything in our universe into spheres, whether it's stars or planets or globs of water. I wish I could say that the insight was helpful to understanding why the Taken blight is shaped this way, but for that you need a physicist and they still haven't found a way to unite the theory of gravity with quantum relativity into a universal theory of everything? Are they even trying? Look, I'm just gonna take a page out of their book and say that the Taken Blight is theoretically scrutable. The last enemy-related orb I'll be looking at is the Hive Shrieker. As the name implies, these things love to scream and I hate them and they are no mystery to me. They look like a flaming purple eyeball, probably because according to the lore, they're scouts for powerful Hive Wizards. Did I mention this sci-fi game has wizards? Anyway, weird eyeballs have kind of been a thing in Destiny 2 lately. Earlier this year, these strange orbs known as Savathun's Eyes appeared all over the solar system. We also got a new special dungeon called Prophecy, which I should note was chock full of inscrutable orbs, that ended with you meeting this giant blue person whose eyeballs look exactly the same as Savathun's eyes. The only problem? That ain't Savathun! How can I scrut these orbs? If these matching orbs aren't just a case of reused art assets, it's potentially a huge deal for Destiny's lore. It's like if the Game of Thrones audience discovered that the Night King was actually working for the Iron Bank of Bravos the whole time because he forgot to take off his employee name tag. This is the thing that really gets me about Destiny's orb fixation. Even if you find some plausible explanation for why there's yet another sphere in the game, it's still going to be baffling in some other way. Take the game's soundtrack. It's called the music of the spheres. Hmm, why is that? Well, they tell us it's a reference to the ancient cosmological philosophy Musica Universalis, which posits that the movement of the heavenly bodies is a form of music. Well, that's just super. But then how do you explain this? Some hope for the future. Some wait for the call. And look, there it is again. Destiny's largest and therefore most mysterious orb, the Traveler. Look, if you don't know what this thing's all about, let me give you a really quick summary. This absolute unit arrived in our solar system and did lots of dope godly shit, but then the darkness showed up and harshed the vibe. The Traveler totally did us a solid and kicked the darkness out, but then it had to chill on doing god stuff for a while, but not before it made a bunch of humans into space wizards. Nice. Now, whenever players do cool space wizard stuff in game, they generate little orbs of light that their bros can use to charge up their wizard powers. It's why the aftermath of Destiny combat often looks like someone busted open a Chuck E. Cheese ball pit. This is what makes the Traveler so integral to Destiny's lore, 
and the whole reason that humanity has survived so long in such an inhospitable universe. But we still don't know why it does these things or what it is, making it the most inscrutable orb in all of Destiny. But I do think the Traveler's shape is central to why Destiny is so orb happy. Like let's say the Traveler was a triangle since the beginning, it probably wouldn't be a lot of triangles in Destiny, not circles. Uh, when, when you start from the Traveler and everything kind of extrapolates from there graphically and visually, you end up with a lot of circles and radiating um, you know, orbs and things like that. So why isn't the Traveler a big triangle? It likely has something to do with shape language. This is the design concept that certain shapes can inform story, mood, or tone. You see it all the time in animation. Round characters are friendly and approachable, while angular characters are aggressive or dangerous. But in animation, it's usually a little more subtle than it is in Destiny, where the Traveler, aka the Good God, is a big ball, and the Darkness, aka the Bad God, is a big triangle. And just like the Traveler has those little orbs of light, the Darkness has little triangular motes of darkness. Okay, so that sort of explains the design reasons behind these shapes, but what about in-game? What is the narrative purpose? Well, clearly these shapes have meaning. Not just that, they're sacred. And what ancient concept prescribes symbolic, sacred meaning to certain geometric shapes? A philosophy that can be traced directly back to Musica Universalis? By none other than Mr. I fucking love angles, Pythagoras? And just so happens to be a guiding pillar of Destiny's graphic design? Sacred geometry. It's all right there in the menus. These orbs are part of a grand design. A grand design that still leaves us wondering why. <sighs> but what if there isn't a why? What if there's just an is? Let me take one more step back. Another big concept in Destiny is paracausality the ability to make something happen simply by willing it, or as the Destiny Wiki helpfully describes it, magic. The Traveler's Light is paracausal, which means that all the Guardians in the game are paracausal as well. In essence, one of the greatest powers in the game is the player's own will. In Destiny, Guardians have the power to make their own fate. So whatever caused all these inscrutable orbs is irrelevant. What matters is the effect, which is a beguiling mystery that we can't help but obsess over and make YouTube videos about. When it comes to a question like, what is the Traveler? Giving an answer would probably do more harm than good. And this is as a fan, not as an employee. Like, I think as soon as you answer the Traveler question, Destiny's over. Like, what happens after that, you know? I think they wanted to, you know, not do the midichlorians thing and, and leave some things like completely open and like, we'll just let you wonder forever what that is. It's not that we'll never know what these orbs are all about, it's that not knowing is the point. The Force was more alluring when it wasn't described as a biological function. Any description of what the Traveler is will never be as satisfying as what you might imagine. I can pontificate about perplexing spheres all day, and you know I would, but what these orbs actually mean is up to you. Because in Destiny, you can make your own fate. And then slam dunk it.